Welcome to Season 7, Episode 8 of the Ubuntu Podcast. In this episode, we'll talk to Graham Morrison about Linux Voice, uh, have a command line love, and we'll read your feedback. If you're listening live, you can send us messages using the chat thing on the website and in the hash UPC ILC channel on the Freenode network. I'm Mark. Yes, you are. with me this week... (laughs) Ah, oh, Tony. Good evening, Mark. Alan. Hello. And Laura. Hiya. Right. Oh, Game much. show mode disactivate, deactivated. <laughs> uh, Tony, what have you been up to? Um, well, mostly not shaving. Oh, um, yes. I've, I, I just realised who you look like. Um, uh, Conchita Verst. <laughs> <laughs> the Austrian winner of Eurovision. Yes. It's the giant wig that gives it away. Yeah. yeah. Well, I decided that, you know, having interviewed Mark Shuttleworth a few weeks ago, it was a good look, the whole <laughs> beard thing adds, you know, gravitas and uh, hasn't hasn't made me wealthy yet. Right. So. But you can't see the sideburns anymore. No, I don't think <laughs> correlation is a causation there. Mark, but more to it? the point, he didn't have a beard when, when he got, got rich. When he got rich now. Oh, I don't know. Oh. <laughs> well, Sorry to break it to you, Tony. You're really harshing my buzz now. So uh, <laughs> I, I can tell oh, you. Okay, then Alan. <laughs> I, I can quickly tell you that lots of generous open source people have been donating to my Malawi fund, um, which has been really uh, interesting to see. And thank you very oh, much. Are you going to Malawi? Yeah, uh, oh, later this year. Yeah, to climb a mountain for charity. Um, I'm just. But you don't like to talk about it. I, I don't like to talk about it, but I do like to talk about it. I have just two hundred pounds left, so hopefully I'll be able to get that in the next couple of weeks. Um, When's the seems- deadline? Uh, sometime in June, so about 20th of June. So um, we're going to put a link in the show notes. If anybody who's listening can donate even just like five, maybe 10 quid. Uh, maybe we should or, all troll you in just a pound. Yeah, that'd yeah. be fine. What, what, where does right. the money go to? It goes to a charity called Amica, um, who provide better health care um, for people who live in Africa and help train up nurses in the UK as well, giving them a really important experience. Not just giving you a jolly in Africa. No. no <laughs> it doesn't yeah. sound particularly <laughs> jolly, actually, from what you've said. I am going to get bitten quite badly by lots of mosquitoes. So oh. if you can spare a couple of quid, worth it. link in the show notes. Go on, you please. just get bitten really badly. <laughs> yeah, you know you want to. Mm. Alan, what have you been doing? Um, I upgraded our Bitfolk VPS that we use on uh, for the podcast that oh, we yes. stream through and we serve the website off of. And uh, yeah, I upgraded it from uh, the ye old and crusty Ubuntu 10.04 to bright and shiny uh, 12.04. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Great. Yes. I might, another, I might, another three years and we'll be on 14.04. Yeah, then. maybe. Yeah, I might upgrade it again soon. Uh, but yeah, it went pretty okay. Uh, You'll get overconfident now trying to get up to 14 or 4. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to leave that. Bring website. I'm not going to do it yet. But yeah, I, it worked. You know, I did the upgrade over, over SSH and uh, it asked me lots of questions. And I think I made vaguely educated decisions about, oh, yes, I want to take the package maintainer's version of this file. No, I don't want to take the package maintainer's version of this file. Oh, that's why the PHP config yes, broke. Yes, yes. I figured it was probably best to take the new PHP any from the maintainer than keep our one i think no, it wasn't that it broke the that. Uh, this the... is just get all over again isn't it yeah, yeah. and then yeah. i realized that actually we have apache 2 and lighty bd lighty lighty. lighty lighty yeah both installed at the same time but we'd shut down apache and we were yeah. using lighty but unfortunately i hadn't removed the run level thing so when it rebooted after <laughs> upgrading apache started up instead of lighty and lighty didn't i mean it all worked but um yeah so most of the issues are actually you know pilot error not yeah, the upgrade just worked, really. Mm-hmm. So, cool. happy days. Normal service has been resumed. Yes, indeed. Laura, what have you been doing? It was my birthday. Hooray! How are you Yay! birthday? Where's the cake? You've eaten it. Oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> that came 250 miles. Wow. Gosh. That cake does travel well. <laughs> Your kitchen is really far away. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And I've been trying to learn about GitHub pages. Ah, how's that going? Not too bad. Well, I noticed that you'd posted a, a GitHub page. I did, yes. I'm trying to work out how to do Markdown and ASCII doc as well. Cool. Awesome. Good luck. Mm. Mm. What about you, Mark? Uh, I have been listening to Little Brother by Cory Doctorow. Oh. Listening to it? I've read the book. Yes, I'm listening to the audiobook. Ah, who reads the audiobook? I can't remember. An American man. An that American was not Stephen Fry then. No. Yeah, I... Um, I got the i got homeland which is the sequel um re, uh, read by will wheaton um, will wheaton. Wheaton. wheaton of star trek and other fame um fame. from the the humble bundle um but i hadn't read little brother so i uh, i thought i better get that first so i bought that off cory doctorow's website you just get a drm free zip file full of mp3s and uh, 
and then he sends you a nice email saying thanks. Oh. Which I thought was quite quite yeah. nice. Yeah. Uh, speaking of Humble Bundle, I bought some comics from oh, yes. um, Humble Bundle comic thing this week, and that's really good. Mm. Yeah. And we need a comic reader for um, Ubuntu Touch. Please, someone make one so I can read comics on my Ubuntu phone. Thank you very much. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Well, we're going to talk to Graham Morrison now from Linux Voice, the yes. magazine. So let's uh, do that. Let's do that. Okay, on the line we have Graham Morrison from Linux Voice. How are you doing, Graham? Uh, not bad, thanks, Alan. Uh, second podcast in a day for me. Oh, wow. yeah. and, and best. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we don't talk about that Absolutely. other one. Absolutely, uh, unequivocally. <laughs> so, uh, what is the Linux Voice Empire? Um, well, there's there's four of us. Um, four of us. The four of us who were previously at the uh, Linux format: um, Ben, Mike, Andrew, and I. Um, and we also have a wonderful art person who does all of our design and layout, and uh, the wonderful cover that went on issue two. And, and her name is Stacy. And so we talked to Andrew um, at the end of last year, and at that time you were midway through your Indiegogo campaign to raise <laughs> funds to create a, um, a magazine, and clearly that's panned out well. Yeah, I think as I remember it, I might not have been involved with the Indiegogo campaign. No, that, no, oh, you weren't at all. They, uh... Were you still employed at that point? <laughs> no, I wasn't. I was um, under a restricted covenant um, <laughs> from my previous employer. Oh. Um, which meant that I couldn't be involved in anything to do with magazines, so I had nothing to do with it. <laughs> okay, so of course, that's maybe maybe now some of the others have told you a bit about it, and you know you can. They got you up to speed yeah, with it. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it did go remarkably well, and um, I know that we had no idea really what the response might be from something like that, from trying to crowdfund a print magazine. Um, we had no idea what the community response would be. Whether we, I mean, we were after ninety thousand um, pounds, and in the end, I think we got one hundred twenty-seven thousand wow. pounds. Um, and we we were and still are completely overwhelmed by the support we've had and the positivity. Um, and and yes, makes us feel great about doing it because there was an awful lot of uncertainty. In fact, I remember last meeting you all at Oddcamp, what October last year. Yeah. And and that for me was just a, a real freefall moment, having uh, handed in my notice and, and not really knowing what the future had in in store. And I loved my job, loved my job at the mixed format, and I I loved doing what we're doing. And at what point was the where was the tipping point um, that that you all um, or that the, the other guys fed back to you their feeling of uh, that this was all going to be a success? <laughs> um, I don't. Obviously, they, I don't think we really knew until, until, and I still actually find it difficult to believe that we've done it and we are doing it, to be honest. Um, well, I've got three, three magazines on my desk, so you did. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and honestly, I, I don't want to complain because it's wonderful, but we've been so ridiculously busy. I just sent issue four to the printers late last Friday, um, and so we're already, I mean, Andrew and Ben came over today, we're already in the thick of issue five. Um, but the, it, I think if you look at the curve for crowdfunding, it always starts off with a lot of momentum. Then there's a, a, a dip, a kind of doldrums where many pro, many kind of projects don't come out of that period. And, yeah, we know a bit about that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, so you yeah. say when the guys come over and uh, you start planning, you've just put one to bed, and which I, I believe is the right phrase, mm. and uh, <laughs> you, you start planning the next one. What does that What does that planning consist of is it sat around in a pub just you know chewing the fat and figuring out what what you know crank out another another magazine is it is there like a a blueprint for what the magazine should look like or is it is it no. uh, a lot more detailed than that um i think we none of us are actually proper magazine people um <laughs> no, <you> tell us. <laughs> yeah. yeah and i gave you my money <laughs> I, well i mean i was at linux format for nine years and but before that i, that I was a, a, a linux person and so i don't know i've never had any kind of journalism or publishing training right. um i imagine the right thing to do is to sit down and think about what what the kind of editorial style of the magazine should be but that's <laughs> not what we do we kind of think yeah this is cool this is awesome i'd like to do this other people have emailed us ideas and we all go we we all kind of agree on on what the editorial formula should be 
And so it's really when we're stuck for ideas that it becomes a problem. And we haven't actually been stuck for ideas since we did Linux Voice. Um, okay, so it sounds like you've had a lot of success. Has anything gone wrong yet, or anything which you think, if uh, if you were to try and do this again, you'd have done it differently? Uh, I'm. I'm also. It has been successful. Um, we still don't know. It's still difficult. We're still negotiating uh, the the breadth of distribution. We still really haven't got sales figures back from the rest of the world or the independent news agents in the UK, um, and so. I think, yes, it's been a success. I don't know whether it's going to be as as enough of a success um, that in five years' time, which is what we want it to be. Right. Um, so, in terms of what we do differently, um, maybe we would have done it sooner. <laughs> <laughs> So do you not know yet if it's if it's going to be sustainable beyond the sort of initial subscription period, or does it look like that you're at least going to be able to keep on doing it at the current level? Oh yeah, it's definitely sustainable. Um, it's there's four of us, um, and it's difficult to. I don't know. It's it's difficult because it's been it's been a great success. There's there's plenty of money to keep the magazine going for a couple of years, three years. Oh, but wow, what, that's good. Yeah. What we want to do is we want to make this a 10-year thing, a 15-year thing. We, we, I mean, um, on Friday, for example, we put up uh, one of the features from the first issue, which was um, the, about Munich City Council converting mm, yeah. their PCs to Linux. And that, that's, I think, what we want Linux Voice to be as a success. We want to actually have an effect it's it's one thing to say that we want to give back to the community and we want to be around long enough and for people to see that it's genuine enough that it actually there is a product from that and in in terms of um feedback i mean obviously sales figures is one kind of feedback what what kind of feedback have you had from uh people who've um committed to the the crowdfunding campaign and what feedback from from your readership we know we know people who who back campaigns can obviously can sometimes feel they have a right to tell you how to run your business um have, yeah. you, have you had much of that or has it been mostly positive how's that how's that come? i mean yeah it's difficult to not sound sycophantic everything has been incredibly positive from the the 2,800 subscribers that we now have, we've only ever had, we've only had one person who's cancelled and that's, that's wow. because they couldn't afford it, um, which I think is, is remarkable. Um, we're still, the, we, we did do a DVD on the first two issues and producing the DVD is expensive. Um, and so while we want to do a DVD several times a year, we don't know what kind of effect that's going to have on our newsstand sales and whether we're going to have to reassess whether that was the right strategy or not. Is that um, expensive from a time-consuming point of view that you're not making, you know, using that time to make the magazine, or is it time-consuming just making the plastic disc and putting it on the cover? Um, well, Mike, Mike um, who used to be the DVD creator at Linux Format, put the, put the DVDs together. Um, they required some kind of technical jiggery pokery with isolinux to get the eight gig dual air thing working but okay. the, the main cost is i mean you can see that when we get 127,000 pounds from the crowd campaign if we're spending eight or ten thousand pounds producing a dvd per issue it's going to it's not we mm -hmm. can do it but we want to see how it's going to affect sales and whether readers in a shop are going to think it's important Right. And not everybody has a player on their laptops anymore. No, no, and and there's this thing called the internet as well. Yeah, and they can download stuff. <laughs> this is something that comes up and did come up time and time again, and we don't know. And it's difficult from the Indiegogo perspective and from an online perspective. The feedback we have is that it isn't important, but they're not the kind of people, perhaps, that buy the, a magazine in the shops. Yeah, um, there's a perception of quality and perhaps better value if there's a DVD on the cover, but. Is it worth it's, thinking about going back to 1.44 inch floppy disks? <laughs> <laughs> They're probably a lot cheaper. <laughs> so, I guess they may even be more expensive, but that would be fun. One, one, yes. Uh, one, oh, sorry, I just suddenly had a flashback to a Mike OS on a, on a floppy disk. Just, <laughs> Alan's yeah. had an idea. No, no. Um, so 
one of the things I noticed, I was looking through uh, WH Smith the other day, and one of the things I noticed is there's a, a raft of not just um, computing magazines, but there's those, I don't know what you call them in the publishing industry, but there's like compilations of articles that are pulled together yeah. for one particular yeah. topic. Would you would you consider doing that kind of thing to supplement the magazine? Because there seem to be a load of those on the shelf. <laughs> Yeah, they they call them uh, they call them bookazines, and and they they do <laughs> entirely of recycled content. Um, we used to do quite a few of them, and and from a business perspective, uh, they sell. In fact, they they kind of they've been growing in in face of the decline of the content, the magazines that actually creates the content for them. Mm. Um, and the, and the great, I think we I, we might do. We haven't actually discussed it, but if they sell, and the money comes back to Linux Voice and we are able to do more with it, then I think it's probably a good thing. Um, regardless, all of our content is going to be CC by SA within nine months anyway. So, so people who can and want to will be able to get the content, whatever we do. Um, but if we happen to package that one day into a bookazine, then I don't know. One of the things we heard about when we spoke to Andrew before Christmas was the intention to pay contributors ahead of um, yourselves, I guess, the Linux, form, <laughs> Linux Voice staff, um, and to make sure that it wasn't just you know fanboys writing in their own personal tips and tricks and, and somebody combining it into a magazine. How is that approach working out? Well, I think it was part of the uh, Indiegogo campaign text that we had a, a flat. We have a flat rate of one hundred pounds per page for contributors. Um, I think and Mike and I write maybe 50 or 60 pages per issue. So there's a good 50 plus pages written by other contributors who, who we paid right from the very beginning and pay promptly, unlike other publishing companies. <laughs> <laughs> and the, but that's looking like it's a sustainable option. You're, you're finding writers at that, at that rate and it's, it's sustainable and working. Um, yes. I mean, it's, it's very similar to what we did before, um, so we are working with some of the same writers, but at the same time, we've I think we've almost created a new. In fact, if you look at this, the percentage statistics in the UK, anyway, we've we've expanded the market for the Linux and open source magazines by something like twenty or thirty percent. So we've brought new readers in. Wow. We've not taken all of our readership from other magazines, mm. um, and we've brought other writers in. Um, but with them, it take with new people. It can take time to. Well, we're working on such strict time limits um, that at least with these first three or four issues it's difficult to predict whether somebody's copy is going to be good enough but we're continually working with people and working with copy to get copy into such a state that we can include other people right now um, it's like this first week of, of a new issue is always admin and working on people who's writing who are writing copy for us and and does that you know I mean, it's, it sounds like it's very much like a software release early in early in the cycle. There's there's a lot of planning, and then at the last minute, you've got a, a, a deadline to hit, and it's you know working till all hours, you know, scrabbling oh, yeah. around trying to get the content done to get it out of the door. Is that pretty much? It is. Yeah, I mean, our, our deadline was Friday. I think this time last week, I had twelve pages to write, which <laughs> right. is, which is over ten thousand words. And and do you do you not just write the content? Who does the typesetting and uh, getting the, the images, screenshots, photos, stock art, that kind of stuff? Is that all you 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 four guys as well? Yeah, we, for our own stuff, we 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 have kind of templates that we send out to people, and we kind of expect them to provide us with as much of the page furniture as, as possible. Although in reality, it's kind of a full time job chasing our writers for that stuff. <laughs> um, but yes, and then all, all of that goes to Stacy. I mean, it is a full-time job taking this raw copy and, and laying it out and making it look good in, in the magazine that she's effectively created in terms of its style, um, which is, in, in, in other publishing companies, when you create a magazine, it has taken six or nine months in my experience. So wow. she's done a wonderful job. Fabulous. So, <laughs> do you, so I was just going to ask about the tools you use for designing and laying out the magazine. Here we I, go. It's, I, it's coming. Yeah, I Graham, get yourself ready. I assume it's Scribus <laughs> and uh, LibreOffice and all the best open source tools that are available. <laughs> <laughs> I hope not. I'll be the sake writers. Uh, well, it's, a, it's Adobe InDesign. And, and I, think we've, I think that might have been mentioned in the Indiegogo campaign as well. We would love to actually work with Inkscape and Scribus people. In fact, um, at Linux Format, Nick Veach um, wrote a section of the magazine using Scribus oh, and InDesign. Yes, yes. um, and 
if I mean, if you if you ever speak to him about it, it took him a long time, <laughs> um, and especially at the moment, Stacy, for example, isn't a Linux person. She's got to work with the tools that she knows best, and and that is InDesign. But also, when really there there have been Saturday mornings where there's been a mess up with some of the copy we've been sending, and we're sending the PDFs directly to the printers who are waiting to print twenty three thousand copies of the PDFs we send them. Unlike in our previous jobs, there's no buffer. There's, no, there's nobody to call us up and say this doesn't look right. Right. Um, and and having that kind of confidence in using InDesign because that's what we used before, and knowing that when we output these PDFs, that's what's what we're going to get on the page twenty three thousand times over. And and I guess you don't have a giant sales team selling advertising <laughs> in in your magazine either. No, there's none. I mean, if you if you've seen the magazine, there's there's, there's oh, it's lovely. There's, yeah, there's a <laughs> I've, I've not even op- I've not opened a single one of the three that I've got on my desk because I get the PDF first and I yeah. read that, and then one comes through the letterbox. I'm like, yay, and not not read it. I haven't even opened them yet. <laughs> Collector's item. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and I'm, 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 you should see my garage. Uh, I'm here in my house where I'm sat. There's, Twenty-three thousand copies <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's like of PDFs. Well, there's there's three hundred in the garage. It's quite funny trying to get pushchairs and things outside. <laughs> but um, yes, the, the, we should be selling more adverts because, on a, on a, especially in these early stages, they would they would really help with our cash flow because we don't get money back from Double Eight Smiths for. A few months, we don't get money back from our U.S. and foreign sales for nine months a year. Wow! Um, and that's that's where I'm. That's what I'm talking about, really, in terms of the, how the magazine's doing. So, do it's, you it, do you have to yeah. track all these payments from overseas places and W. H. Smith and chase them? Are you are you your own finance department as well? Um, we our distributor handles that. Although uh, we're in very close contact with them over you know mm. on a weekly basis but they're the, they're the people who have arranged and helped us to arrange to get the magazine into all the places we've been able to get it into uh, okay i see and do you find the 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 podcast which we haven't talked about but kind of goes <laughs> along with the 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 magazine uh, does the do you find the podcast drives people to buy the magazine or does the magazine you know drive listeners to the to the podcast or is it, are they two entirely separate things that share a name i think and this is something I only realized um, after, after leaving the previous place, was just how important the podcast has been um, in, in what Linux Voice has become and, and how important Linux podcasts are in general to the community and the community that all of them... Well, of course. Of, <laughs> yes, yeah, but I, I, I mean, I can, really, I can really feel it and I feel like I see it a lot clearer now and I didn't particularly realize that in our... I mean, I did it all on my laptop before, and I'd cycle in with the, the thing on my on my back, and we'd record it in an office. And it, we didn't really see it inside that office where I couldn't see daylight. But uh, but since leaving, since kind of throwing a crowd surfing, <laughs> you know, um, I do I do really feel it. It is important, and I think it's it's a different proposition when the magazines on the shelves in W. H. Smiths. I'm not sure they may be podcast listeners, but in actually making this a reality and, and driving the community, yes. I think it's a fundamental part of it. And have you seen copies of the magazine yourself with your own eyes in <laughs> W.H. Smith's? Yeah, I have. I, I was probably the last member of the team to do so because, like lots of people, actually, I went into lots of places and couldn't find a copy. <laughs> <laughs> Each time we can't find a copy, we email the distributor and say, you know, what's, what's going on with this? But, yeah, um, I think it was issue three that I first saw in a, on the shelves in the magazine. It was, it was an... I, it's difficult. It's an amazing moment because, for many many years, we talked of doing something similar to this um, in a non-committal way that had nothing to do with what eventually happened. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Brilliant. Well, it's been lovely to talk to you, Graham, and uh, we wish you all the best for the next ten years of Linux Voice. And, I hope so. And uh, we'll maybe catch up with you over a beer at the next old camp. Yeah. And if people want to look at the magazine or subscribe to it or download it, where can they go? Uh, well, the, the main site is at linuxvoice.com. Shop.linuxvoice.com takes you to our, our store page. Um, but I think you get the idea. <laughs> <laughs> Just Google I'm, Linux I'm a Voice. terrible salesman. Yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. We'll put a link in the show notes. Thanks very much, Graham. Take care. Thanks for having me on. Cheers, Andrew. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye.
And it's time now for a command line love, which is particularly interesting that this time it's called Betty. Oh, Betty. Thank you, Mark. I, I had money on me being the one to do that, yeah. but there we go. Yeah. Well, he just can't shut up, that guy. You're always talking in inappropriate <laughs> times. <laughs> um, so, what is it? Well, Betty seems to be a command line version of Siri. Which is the uh, something to do with Apple phones and you talk... At oh, a voice recognition. Stuff. So you can, like, shout at your terminal. Is no, that what you're no, saying? It's, oh. yeah. it's sort of, like, supposed to be, like, a natural language parser for Bash. So yeah. rather than rather oh. than having to type, you know, grep thing dot slash, you can, you can type, um, give me all files in this directory that contain Word. And then it will... Wow, that of, sounds really, really good. Instead of typing ls... Yeah, well, <laughs> no, but no, the po- no. Well, grep. I mean, no. If, if you think about grep, it's quite a complex command to remember right. all, of the, all of the switches. Whereas if you can say what you mean, in I English. want I want everything in this directory that contains this word, and then it will pick out that you're saying you want files, and you want this directory, and you want that word, and then it will work out that grep <laughs> command does that and do that for you. And does it is it only work in with specific tools or is it is it and is it like Taylor for Linux or OS ten or um, I think it's it's written for Bash basically. So I right. think it was I think it's been developed on OS ten, but it should uh, the same Bash commands right. work on Give me Bash. How does it work? Bash. Um it's I think it's um like regular expression parser um that sort of takes the the string you type in mm. um, as one argument, and then it parses out what that's likely to mean. And if it comes up with more than one suggestion, it lets you pick one. Um, oh. And so you can you can like add your own ones. I mean, some of the examples there, uh, you could say, you know, Betty, give me permission to this directory, and it will do a ch own command, work out what your user is, and change this directory to you. That's quite clear. Um, uh, Betty unzip archive.zip to this directory like so that you can make sure that it's going into a subdirectory and you're not giving it the wrong flag and it's going to spit it all into mix it all with yeah. the current files and you can have it um do sort of other more commands which might be more complex like dbus commands so you can say betty play spotify and it'll make spotify play which would got, normally be a um, bit tricky to do from the command line plugins and stuff so people can like developers can add their own bits and bobs that attach to like you say spotify or something else yeah i think it's just um, I mean, if you look at uh, if you look at the GitHub page, it's quite simple in terms of just being able to add your own bits to it. Right. I'm not sure exactly how it works. I've not tried it myself, but it, it so, looks like it's just a case of like adding more patterns to match for, and then adding how they pass into. So I could uh, add in the feature to sudo make me a sandwich. Yes. Awesome. Yeah, and I think there is some silliness in there as well. Oh, say. good. If you say things like it's that. very much like Siri, then. <laughs> very much like Siri, yes. Just hours of playing around trying to find all the Easter eggs and not actually using it for anything proper. <laughs> Does it actually work? Um, it seems to. I've not tried it, but from what I, well, from looking at the code, it looks like it should do. <laughs> if only that's Excellent. how we could test all software. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, yeah, it's really simple code, so. Excellent. It's easy to tell. Fantastic. Yes. Well, that's a, he sounds like a useful command line love, and uh, we will uh, get on with the rest of the show. And now it's time for some feedback. Uh, so a friend of the show, Dave Jeffrey, um, said these days if you want to make a photograph look old i use the g mic plugin for the gimp it's in the ubuntu repository and i highly recommend it you can even choose the film stock you want to emulate oh so this was after your command line love last week yeah which was what was it it command was online instagram it, yeah yes. that was it brick something yeah well it used um convert, convert from image magic to right. add a, an effect over top of an existing image to make it look a bit red right <laughs> It seems to be that's basically all it did was make it red. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, this is a bit more advanced. So there are GIMP mm. plugins that let you Instagramify your pictures as well. It does sound like it, yeah. That's quite cool. Yeah, thanks for writing in, Dave. Yeah. Uh, Scott Hodgson emailed in uh, saying, I want to lock down Ubuntu 14.04 for users other than admin. This includes no editing icons in Unity, no access to system settings, and only show or have access to programs associated with a group. I've searched for a while now in, on using 1204. can only find Menu Libra or EZAME for configuring the menu. 
Uh, it's for a charity I help in my spare time, so I need it to be a ge- generic release on all machines that's easy to maintain. I've used ele- elementary OS previously, but found some elements of it incompatible with software for admin use. Any help would be appreciated. Yeah, this is a good idea. A good um, idea for like kiosk type yeah. computers and ones that you know where any changes get reverted when you when you log out or you know undone or something like that mm. might be might be similar. It sounds like they he wants individual users to have access to stuff, but very limited access. Yes, and not be able to just open the dash and drag new things into the launcher on a whim and stuff like right. that, which I suppose there's Unity doesn't really provide a way of you not being able to do that, does it? Um, I don't know. I, uh, things. I don't know. Uh, it may well, you may well be able to, to cludge that with... Um, with app armor uh, and have oh, a yes. security profile to stop it, or you may be able to do something like make the directory read only that's got all the dot desktop files in it, dot local share applications or something that in mm. the home directory, so they can't actually add things to the launcher. But I don't know how Unity would react when you do that. Um, it might have a bit of a hissy fit, not being able to write to places that it expects to be able to. Interesting I don't know. experiment. Yes, certainly is. If anyone else has had any experience in uh, locking down Ubuntu and making it uh, less configurable for um, for users, then uh, do let us know. Send us an email, podcast at ubuntu-uk.org. And Stuart Langridge has been in touch via the IRC channel, hash UPC, on the Freenode network. Just to clarify something that we said in our last episode around the legal uh, ruling from the European Union Court of Justice, um, which is, he just wants to clarify that the court held that the claimant, who was somebody who was asking to have some information about them removed from Google, um, the claimant could not require the publishing website to remove the stuff about them because that's public interest, but did hold that Google had to remove links to it because it was giving it undue prominence. So it's not about suppressing something completely from the internet i think that's fair okay well just google the thing that you people use to find everything on the internet mm. just use a different search engine and you'll find the stuff anyway there are different search engines well apparently oh, so i'm told yahoo and bing i guess duck, duck, go. <laughs> <laughs> just a noise <laughs> <laughs> that's all your feedback the ubuntu podcast needs you yes you if you hear something that entertains, engages, or enrages you, tweet at UUPC or email podcast at ubuntu-uk.org. You can also talk to us on the telephone, Skype, Facebook, and Google+. Find links to all these places on our website, podcast.ubuntu-uk.org. Please do get in touch. I mean it. Just one message. Just to know there's someone out there who cares. That's all for this show. Thank you for listening. The next live show will be on Wednesday, the 28th of May at half eight in the evening. Well, I'll tell you what, you go to the calendar page on the website and it will probably show it in your local time. If it's working. <laughs> probably. <laughs> <laughs> well, they were all over the place this week. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, there was somebody upgraded the server and broke it. Uh, no. Yeah. Well, the next Broke the PHP. No, broke the Google calendar. I don't think so. Yeah. Um, the next few are in the uh, Sorry, calendar now, me. anyway. How do you do with me? <laughs> anyway. Um, Thank you for listening, everybody. Thank you for listening. Goodbye Join us. And yeah, good night. We'll rant offline. Good night. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye.